will testify before Congress and the country tomorrow morning. But tonight here, we know how he plans to start. He will acknowledge that he did tell the president that he was not under investigation personally on multiple occasions. Comey also claims that the president, during a one-on-one -on -one dinner in the green room of the White House, demanded loyalty from Comey, saying, quote, I need loyalty, I expect loyalty. And when it came to the investigation into retired General Michael Flynn, Comey will say the president urged him to let this go. ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, leading us off. It's dramatic and almost cinematic. I first met President-elect Trump on January 6th, James Comey writes, in a conference room at Trump Tower. Comey was there with other intelligence leaders to brief Trump on Russian interference in the election. And when that meeting wrapped, Comey says, I remained alone with the president-elect to brief him on some personally sensitive aspects of the information, even though it was salacious and unverified. Then Comey, for the first time, told Trump he was not personally the focus of a counterintelligence investigation. As soon as he left, Comey writes down what happened. I began to type it on a laptop in an FBI vehicle outside Trump Tower the moment I walked out of the meeting. Creating written records immediately after one-on-one -on -one conversations with Mr. Trump was my practice from that point forward. This had not been my practice in the past. Oh, and there's James. He's become more famous than me. <laughs> Five days later, Trump invites the FBI director to dinner at the White House. It turned out to be just the two of us, Comey says. The president began by asking me whether I wanted to stay on as FBI director, which I found strange. A few moments later, the president said, I need loyalty. I expect loyalty. I didn't move, speak, or change my facial expression in any way during the awkward silence that followed. We simply looked at each other in silence. Towards the end of the dinner, Comey says the president returned to the question of loyalty. He then said, I need loyalty. I replied, you will always get honesty from me. He paused and then said, that's what I want, honest loyalty. I paused and then said, you will get that from me. The next meeting, February 14th in the Oval Office, along with Vice President Pence, Attorney General Sessions, Jared Kushner, and others. Trump asks everybody to leave except Comey, who describes what happens next. The president began by saying, I want to talk about Mike Flynn. Flynn had resigned the previous day. The president began by saying Flynn hadn't done anything wrong in speaking with the Russians. But he had to let him go because he had misled the vice president. Comey says the president told him he is a good guy and has been through a lot. He repeated that Flynn hadn't done anything wrong on his calls with the Russians. He then said, I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go. He is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. I replied only, he is a good guy. Comey continues saying, I did not understand the president to be talking about the broader investigation into Russia or possible links to his campaign. I could be wrong. Regardless, it was very concerning, given the FBI's role as an independent investigative agency. The president has denied asking Comey to drop the Flynn investigation. Did you at any time urge former FBI Director James Comey in any way, shape, or form to close or to back down the investigation into Michael Flynn? And also, as you look no. back... No. Next question. After that one-on-one -on -one Oval Office meeting, Comey says he approached Attorney General Sessions. I took the opportunity to implore the Attorney General to prevent any future direct communication between the President and me. But just over a month later, a phone call. The President called me at the FBI, Comey says. He described the Russia investigation as a cloud that was impairing his ability to act on behalf of the country. He said he had nothing to do with Russia, had not been involved with hookers in Russia. He asked what we could do to lift the cloud. I responded that we were investigating the matter as quickly as we could. Comey says Trump then asked him to publicly say he was not under investigation. He repeatedly told me we need to get that fact out. Finally, on April 11th, one last conversation. Trump calling again, asking to have his name publicly cleared. And, Comey says, cryptically adding this. I have been very loyal to you. Very loyal. We had that thing, you know. 
I did not reply or ask him what he meant by that thing. That was the last time I spoke with President Trump. And so John Carl with us live tonight from the White House. And John, if Comey told the president on multiple occasions that he wasn't under investigation, why didn't Comey go public and say that President Trump is not personally under investigation and tell the American people? Well, Comey said that there were several reasons for not going public, primarily because if it changed and if the FBI investigation began to turn to focus on President Trump, Comey said there would have been a duty to correct the record. He would have had to come forward publicly and say the president was under investigation. By the way, David, we now have a statement from the president's personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, noting that Comey said on three separate occasions that he was not under investigation. Kasowitz says the president feels completely and totally vindicated. David? Vindicated the word from President Trump's personal attorney tonight, John Carl, or thanks to you, ABC's chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, with us now. Dan, we do know now that Comey did, in fact, tell the president he's not under investigation personally. Comey's saying in the memos that could change. But Comey also writes in the memos, the president demanded loyalty, said he expects loyalty. And as we mentioned on the Michael Flynn investigation, he said, can you let this go? Is that appropriate between a president and an FBI director? No, it's totally inappropriate, and here's why. The FBI takes its independence very seriously, particularly when you're talking about an investigation that touches people around Donald Trump, even if it wasn't Donald Trump himself. And on this notion that he wasn't personally being investigated, keep in mind, A, that there might be the potential that things could change, two, that things have already changed in the fact that he was fired and what Donald Trump has said since then. So it doesn't make it illegal for Donald Trump to have made the comments he did to Comey, but it's going to be a question of the big picture here. Dan Abrams with us tonight as well. Dan, thank you. In the